Let me share with you the terrible wonders I have come to know. You know, they say sharing is caring, but I think we're going to have to make an exception for this one. Hello, everyone. Science Viking here, and we're back to Darkest Dungeon. And let me see something. I believe, yeah, we fully upgraded the guild and the blacksmith, but we have quite a few uh, heirlooms yet. Let's see what else we could upgrade. Let me see, we could reduce disease treatment cost, but that's not terribly impressive since um, diseases already don't cost much to treat. The wounding helmet for the bounty hunter. If we could afford it, I would buy that. Hmm, we have enough crests to upgrade the nomad wagon. In time, you will know the tragic oh. extent of my failings. But let's look into upgrading the uh, stagecoach. We need four more busts to get experienced recruits, which will occasionally get us heroes of resolve level three. Well, let's let's trade for busts. Alright, trading three deeds and two portraits. And now we have enough busts. And now we will is traveling. Ambition is stirring in distant cities. We can use this. And now we will occasionally have um, lambs, I mean heroes of resolve level three appear at the stagecoach. Let me check. And Oh, I could have, there's one final upgrade to the hero barracks, I didn't realize that. That's actually probably what I'm going to upgrade next. In the meantime, I'd say we should go on a quest or two. The wallet's looking a little light. We could take on the Necromancer Lord. However, I do think I want to take on a uh, champion level mission, but I think I'm not going to do one in the room. I'll do one in the Wield or the Cove. Let's see, we could get Holy Orders. We already have one set of Holy Orders. A single Crusader can't equip two, but we could... Two copies of the same trinket, that is. But we could potentially have a second uh, Crusader. So we could potentially send two Crusaders on the same mission. And also, we could lose a Crusader who is equipping the Holy Orders. In which case, having a spare would be... Alternatively, we can get the Beast Slayer's Ring. I'm going to go with this one, especially since we have less experience in the room. So the question is, who to bring? Hmm, Emery, Bertrand, and Traley. So, that's a very damage over time oriented party, which is actually pretty viable. Then the question is just who to bring in the front. Well, Ad <coughs> Adonel is still having his disease treated, so let's put Sword of All in. That's not Sword of All, this is Sword of All. So, yeah, I think this is a viable team. And I want to try. I want to kind of break the champion level heroes in a little bit before we try to take on a champion level boss like the Necromancer Lord. Well, let's equip everybody. Let's see, Barristan's head could actually be pretty useful. Let's sort the trinkets by character class. I know we have equipment that's specific to the man at arms. Is the other man at oh the other man at arms is equipping the longevity eye patch? And I all right, let's unequip that. Yeah, these are the two uh, things I want Sword of All to equip: the recovery charm and the longevity eye patch. The bleed stone and the life crystal, I'd say, are good for Emery. I'd say Bertrand is actually pretty good too. Yeah, the other three are equipped because they were on a mission earlier. So, let's provision. 
a medium length champion level cleanse mission. This is going to be interesting. We're in the wheel, so we want to bring plenty of shovels. I don't think I need five, though. I know there's going to be blight, and there's going to be some bleed. There, I believe, is more blight than bleed, and also we do have uh, battlefield medicine to cure blight. Grab some medicinal herbs, a couple of keys, a little holy water, and plenty of torches, and plenty of food. Alright, I'd say we're prepared. Let's begin. Ah, the mark of death from fungal artillery. Yep, we've we've had some experiences with that one. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. All right. Finally, I get my hands on an authentic Eldritch sample. Fast healer. Plus 10% healing skills while camping. Not bad, though. Wait. That replaced Slugger. That was actually a loss. <laughs> slugger is a lot more useful for a man at arms. Curious is the trap maker's art. His efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. Well, at least he uh, resisted blight. And cultists! They probably have some new nasty surprises. Let's see. Hound's Rush can hit anything except in position one, so I'm actually going to use Target Whistle on the champion. Dazzling Light on the other champion. In Radiance, may we find victory. And Rampart on the champion that I marked. And Noxious Blast on the Witch that is now within range of Noxious Blast. And now the two Witches do actually get to do something. And that something is Stressful Incantation. Well... See how quickly we can take out the witch. She's only blighted for twelve, so she has another turn in here. Oh. And, and stumbling scratch, which missed anyway. Ooh, Eldritch pull, that could be a problem. That is a problem. Oh! Finish off the champion. Attempt to finish off the champion, I suppose. See how much of a difference Dazzling Light can make. And, yep, we were gonna see Rend the Old Gods sooner or later. Well, Rampart. A death by inches. She's Dazzling Light on the one that isn't stunned. And now they're all stunned. Right, the Plague Doctor is so thoroughly out of position that he can't even do anything. Oh, Hound's Harry. And Crush. Because Crush can comfortably hit the Witch. Unfortunately, I believe Stressful Incantation can hit whoever it wants to from wherever it wants to. The enemy seems to receive more flexibility than we do in what positions they can be in to use various abilities. And... I'm just gonna use Noxious Blast on the champion. I'll have the Vestal heal him, and I'll worry about getting him back into position later. Partially because <laughs> when I can heal him for 26, 
I don't need to worry so much about uh, dealing with that bleeding immediately. Oh, impressive. So she has five and is blade is bleeding for four. Let's just get rid of her. And he's yeah he's bleeding slash he's bleeding and blighted for a total of ten. So he does get to get that one last rend for the old gods in. And since you're going to kill the champion, uh, you just use a bandage. You're bleeding for nine. There we go. A faint hope blossoms. Yeah, I'd say uh, the enemies have clearly upped their game by comparison to better editions, and I wouldn't have expected anything less. And our first shallow grave. Great opportunity to use the shovel we just found. Oh, we gotta drop something. Um. Yeah, I go with the dog treats. I forget to use them most of the time anyway. Ah, you. Corrupted giant. Fortunately, since everybody else is in stealth, I forgot to reposition. I actually forgot to reposition. Right, Rampart. Let's see if we can stun him. He has pretty hefty stun resistance. I'm just going to continue the fight with this um, layout. I think we can actually win with the heroes in this position. Brace Dark. What does that do? Oh, just, it's basically stressful incantation. Okay. Well, Noxious Blast again. It's not doing a huge amount, and his 100% light resistance is a bit of a problem. Though this reduces... The thing about Noxious Blast is it reduces his accuracy. The light. The promise of safety. Alright, may as well just use Divine Comfort. I don't have any other good options. If he has increased stun resistance, I'll exploit the fact that she doesn't. There we go. And Hound's Rush, which can be used from any position except for position one. And there we go. Those are the kind of damage numbers I wanted to see. And Tree... Uh, the, uh, tree Branch Smackdown. Not something you want to be seeing happening to your guys. That did a lot. And the Hound is showing his usual accuracy. Well, let's quick, let's quick put the man-at-arms back together. We numbered the pieces this time, so it should be easier. Well, since the Corrupted Giant no longer has increased stun resistance, let's see if we can stun it this time. We can. If she's just going to keep using Embrace the Dark, I mean, it's not ideal, but it's not actually causing damage, and the stress levels are low enough that nobody's going to be... Um, Nobody's going to be afflicted during this battle. I may as well just keep focusing on the uh, giant. His blight resistance is frighteningly high for the fact that I'm using the Plague Doctor as one of my heroes in this fight, though. Haha! <laughs> 36 damage criticals will help, though. And. Yeah, let's just hit him with Judgment. It's not going to do a lot, but it'll make progress. Though one of the benefits of Noxious Blast is that it's also debuffing him to reduce his accuracy. That's the main. That's really the main benefit of that. Because, well, when it hits, Tree Branch Smackdown does a lot. Okay, he's blighted for 8, and he has 8, so I can start ignoring him now means moving the Plague Doctor back, and using Target Whistle on the Crone. Once her friend is down, she's not going to last long. She does apparently... The weapon that cuts on its own. I guess embracing the darkness gave her the ability to dodge the light, 
And if she can literally move faster than light, a mace has no chance of hitting her. Well, let's try that again. There we go. And because she's marked, that will not hit. Okay. Well struck. Excise the tumor. And despite be so despite being stunned, she managed to dodge twice. Are we fighting a crone or a Jedi? Like, she apparently doesn't even have to be awake to dodge things. Light up the last torch. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. And, uh... You know what? I'm actually going to drop the rest of the bandages. We have battlefield medicine to deal with the bleeding. And let's... Okay, now that we're actually in our default party order, we have battlefield medicine to deal with bleeding. And that note is getting left behind. And it's the same one talking about Hewell, the exemplary warrior. I swear, I think I've seen that note more than I've seen any other note in this game. And hunger. Honestly, though, we're probably going to have to rest due to stress at some point. Nature herself, a victim to the spreading corruption, malformed with misintent. Remind me, why are we doing this again? I mean, I, I mean, I feel like at this point it might be more effective to just burn everything and run away and just never speak of this again. Ah, spiders! Nah, we all know curiosity is going to get the better of us. We need to see what happened. See how crushed it is. At least it hits. Right, and judgment. Judgment does not hit. Blight resistance is only 60%. Blade grenade should be able to blight. It can. Slowly, and there we go. Gently. This is how a life is taken. Bite can hit any position. See, this is what I mean. The, and the game is a bit more generous to the enemies. Wow. Oh, battlefield medicine. You're gonna need it. The rarity in the fever pitch of battle. All right. And for you, use one of those anti-venoms. Okay. That's good. I'm actually going to use Blackjack. The Vestal is going to need a turn to heal itself. Oh, this is Battlefield Medicine again. It's at least a start. Ah, oh, crap. That's bad. That's, that's many kinds of bad. Yeah, yeah, uh, Traley, I agree. Anti-Venom now. And Divine Grace. Alright. And Hound's Rush still didn't kill the Ancient Lever. This should. There we go. Is broken. Maintain the offensive. Yeah, we're actually probably going to have to make camp pretty soon. I'm coming back for this. And I'm coming back for this, too. Because we're going to have to come back this way anyway. Um, because we're going to the end of this branch and then we have to loop back around, so we may as well get those two curios when our inventory is more empty. Because we have fewer supplies. Because packs laden with loot are off the low for supplies. Alright. Target whistle on the cultist witch. And it is... The positioning of this hallway battle is just right, so it looks like the obstruction is a fourth enemy. Like, we're fighting three cultists and a tree. Honestly, it will be no stranger than some of the other stuff that had us fight. I really... 
I didn't think of it, but I really should have had Trailer just heal herself. Oh, crush. And Noxious Blast on the one who was just hit by Crush. Noxious Miss, apparently. And throwing the Houndmaster out of position again. That is a really disconcerting sound for uh, Rent the Old Gods. Oh, that's bad. That's every, that, is, that is apocalyptically bad. And his resolve is tested and he's afflicted too. That's a lot of damage for us to have taken in one round. Well, take out the witch. Attempt to take out the witch, I mean. Alright, Divine Grace on, uh... Okay. And that if he's not gonna take the healing, he's done himself. That's good. The ground quakes. Okay, that's actually good. Thank you. I didn't tell you to do it, and it's not what I was going to tell you to do, but And they are just moving Emery back and forth and back and forth. Push him and pull him and push him and pull him and Oh crap. Um, Sword of All is about to be at death's door. Okay, let her heal you this time. Okay, good. You're still bleeding for nine per round for four rounds. And the mark wore off before Emery actually managed to hit with... Just use Hound's Harry, then. Distributed bleeding damage is at least somewhat useful. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Now let's see if we can stun the brawler. Okay, we can. Really should not have thrown away the bandages. Okay, he's at least stunned. Alright, Divine Grace. Okay, 16. I like 16. 16 is a good number. Crush on the champion to make sure he dies. Okay, champion is out. That just leaves the witch. The witch is not that bad. A devastating blow. And the witch is not any kind of bad anymore. Okay. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Okay. It's the end of the fight. This expedition at least promises success. And, uh... Hey. They gave us a shovel. And a pack. With a hundred gold that we can't carry in it. Please don't be a room battle, whatever's in this room. Please be something that isn't a room battle. It's not a room battle. <laughs> there are no room battles in this wing. So we didn't ever need to come this way. Well, I mean, there's whatever this is, there's a secret door, and there's two curios that definitely generate loot. So I suppose there were benefits to coming this way. But let's heal everyone. Gathered close in tenuous firelight, an uneasy companionship. Okay, experimental vapors. We're definitely going to need that to heal sort of all should make you feel much better. But it, if it had worked, that would have been very nice. Okay, I'm going to get Hound's Watch because I don't want any midnight surprises. Let's see. Wound Care, Wound Care, Pep Talk, Therapy Dog, Pep Talk, Self-Medicate. I'm going to have the Vestal use Wound Care on Sword of All. And... Yeah, I'll use Pep Talk on Sword of All, just to try and decrease the probability of him having a heart attack. And now we rest. 
the match is struck. A blazing star right. is born. I'm gonna move back this way to see. Yep, it's a pack. And it has a map inside. And the map gives us a significant portion of the dungeon scouted. In fact, it gives us all of it. There are two room battles remaining. Okay, now we have a bit of backtracking, but it's back. And yep, hallway battles respawn. At least it won't be a shambler. Okay, this is bad. This is very... So this is where I left my abomination. This, uh... If I sound afraid, don't worry, it's only because I... Okay, uh... She's dazzling light on the ghoul, and miss. He's target with... Alright, I can't hit the scratcher with, um... Pounds rush, so I'll just stun it. Alright. Play grenade on the two in the back. Okay, the Virago has blight. Hateful Vir Virago has blight resistance of 140%. You know, when they tell you to give 140%, that shouldn't include blight resistance, alright? Fine, Grace. Okay, at least you resisted Blight. Oh, Rampart. Okay, the Ghoul doesn't get to attack this turn. Well, let's hit the Ghoul with Plague Grenade again. I really should have used, uh... There's Hound's Rush on the Claw. That didn't do as much damage as I was hoping it would. Nothing seems to take damage. That's the problem. They're just too durable. And purifying breath. That does a lot. Let's use battlefield medicine to remove his uh, bleeding. Honestly. None of these is too crazy high bleeding resistance, so maybe Hounds Harry is actually my best option. Right. You actually are going to need to use Rampart then to get back into position. We did at least successfully stun the one of them that hadn't acted yet, so that's helpful. And Divine Comfort, because everybody is damaged, even if everybody is a lot damaged. with Hounds Harry and play grenade on the ghoul and see if we can just right. the horror all right so if I hit the ghoul with anything it will it will die next turn so Hounds Harry should finish the job unfortunately Ren at least at least Ren the mark is targeting the person who's most able to handle it well, Defender is not the worst thing you could have done that turn, sort of all. Ah. Unbalanced. Okay. Let's see. Your Blight Resistance is 140, yours is 100. I'm gonna stick with Battlefield Medicine, then. There's really nothing else that Bertrand can do right now. Ah, great, and the Vestal's stunned, too. Well, Hound's Harry. That should be the end of the ghoul, one way or another. Alright, let's use Crush on the Clawer. It's taking six, so if we can do ten... Well, we did half of ten! Okay, we can ignore the Clawer and the ghoul. Virago is all that we have to worry about. Anymore. ...cannot be left unanswered. 
putrefying breath. Injury and despondence. Right, battlefield medicine. Poor cowardice. Right, battlefield medicine to cure the Vestal of her blight. He has 240% stun resistance. We're not stunning him. Crush, however. You're barely causing any damage. Use Defender on the most injured party. And that's Champion one down. Falls. You were bleeding for less than I thought you were. Well, you're going to die next turn anyway, so target whistle on the Virago. Because now, it'll take extra damage when I hit it with uh, Hound's Rush. Alright. And yeah, the Virago has such high stun resistance. Uh. Yeah, Noxious Blast cannot stun the Virago ever. Weakened. Is Virago a hallway boss, or is this a regular enemy that I'm going to be regularly dealing with? I suppose, I suppose only time will tell. But we're down to just Virago and nobody else. Okay, how do you like it, Virago? Okay. Putrefying Breath. Unfortunately, we have Battlefield Medicine if we need it, and we do. And in spite of what you did, just did to him, the Plague Doctor is still going to heal. Okay, you move back one. Divine Comfort. And Battlefield Medicine. Restores a few hit points, but cures Blight. Never hidden. Ruinous Hex is a lot less dangerous when he doesn't have um, the Fungal Claw anymore. Would have been nice if that had hit. Oh, okay. Looks like I'm using that on someone else then. Okay, see if you can hit this time. Still no. Okay. Well, you'll let the Vestal heal you. That's good enough. And the Virago is no longer bleeding. Fortunately, Ruinous Hex missed twice, you know? Oh, Hound's Rush. Precision and power. There we go. Foolish horrors. Brought low and driven into the mud. I'm actually going to leave those two deeds behind. Uh, if that... If that was a regular enemy, I am legitimately terrified. Right. Let's grab this first. Trust me, there's a reason for that. Glittering gold, trinkets and baubles. Paid for in blood. Grab 750 gold for four busts. And now I'm going to go back. And now I'm going to open this, because now I'm using our last key, which frees up an inventory space. Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Okay, there's one obstacle we have to get past yet, so I can't drop the shovels. Okay, these total more than 1,750 gold. And I'm going to drop the medicinal herbs. I know there was a curio that would benefit from them elsewhere in this hallway, but they're not... I'm not going to get the equivalent of 3,500 gold from doing that. So... Yeah, this carcass we're just going to ignore. The carcasses can, can be profitable, but not... not as much as a trapezohedron. I'm honestly tempted to just retreat. We're a decent ways away from the end of the mission. We've gotten some pretty valuable stuff. This one I think is another shovel interaction. No, it's not a shovel interaction. I'm not sure what kind of interaction it is, but it's something we don't have any of right now. I know I've done that one correctly, but I don't remember what it is. 
can you use blackjack on an enemy all the way in the back? Do that then. Okay, crush on the militia. And it's decided to go bump in the night, but the militia, they're just the upgraded version of the uh, bone rabble, so they're not really terribly dangerous. And Plague Grenade. His Blight Resistance is a little high, but it's tolerable. <laughs> and and the Man-at-Arms is becoming a pacifist. That's a problem. And let's generate a bit more light. Oh, oh great. Confusion Spores. That's very bad. And Plague Grenade managed to miss this time. <laughs> I command we all be friends and explore this place together. Well, if, if they'll get me out of this fight alive, I'll agree with you, sort of all. Right. And you can move forward too, which puts us mostly back into position. And let's just keep Dazzling Light up and keep failing. Bump in the night isn't that bad. Tree Branch Smackdown is that bad. Perched at the very precipice of oblivion. And his resolve is tested. You know, I would be pretty selfish so too if I was at zero hit points. At any cost. Okay. Just gonna go with Divine Comfort. Because that'll restore some of his hit points and get him off the death's door. That crunch sound is almost as frightening as the uh, squishing sound from Rent of the Old Gods. Okay, rampart yourself forward and damage the militia. Well, you did one of the two things I wanted you to do. Wow. However, Hounds Harry should kill the militia. Instead, it did that. My luck is really turning around in this mission. Uh, let's hope it turns back around before everyone dies. Exposed to a killing blow. <laughs> Confusion spores knocked us back into the correct position. <laughs> This line will not break. And he's at death's door again. Teetering on the brink, facing the abyss. And Hounds Harry again. Okay. Now we're down to just the corrupted giant. I mean, just the corrupted giant is a lot. Battlefield medicine to get him off of death's door. It's one of the reasons why I have it. Birds are nesting in our skulls, apparently. You know, with some of the stuff we've seen. It honestly wouldn't surprise me. And he's about to be at death's door. A hand's breadth from becoming unwound. Now let's use blackjack. See if we can stun this thing. It only had a 20% chance of working. Same as before. They would not approve. Well, okay, Noxious Blast, then. And Divine Grace. Okay, they would apparently approve of that, at least. Apparently, they only want you to be healed by good healing abilities. And I'm just going to keep using Blackjack until it works. I'm stubborn like that. Oh, Poison Spores. Yet another thing that makes these guys dangerous. And Rampart. Okay, now he's finally stunned. Okay, we have Anti Venom. And we have Divine Comfort. A momentary abatement. And he's decided to pass his turn again. You have free to sit this one out.
target whistle. Noxious Blast again. Takes a lot to chew through his hit points. And Bertrand's resolve is tested. And he's abusive! Yay! Frustration and fury. More destructive than a hundred cannons. <laughs> okay, there we go. Take your anger out on the enemy. Alright, divine comfort. Kindly examine my wounded mace instead. Okay, his stun resistance is 140%, so you can't stun him, so just damage him. Okay. You make a better patient than a surgeon. Please miss with whatever you do. You did not follow my instructions, Mr. Giant. I even asked you nicely. The sharp things always find the soft things. Okay, let's use Battlefield Medicine to get him off the death's door. So he went at the end of the... Wow! And now, the true test. Hold fast, or expire. Right. Well, let's try to find comfort. Actually, if I can't target Sword of All with healing, I may as well just heal. Yeah, Divine Grace on the Houndmaster. That's actually a pretty okay thing to do. Battlefield Medicine. Let's get him off of Death's Door. Blackjack. Critical Blackjack. And it stunned him, too! Did everything I wanted it to. Alright, Divine Grace, and it finally worked. Okay, things are starting to turn around in this fight, but this has been... This has been an ordeal. The bigger That's... the beast, the greater the glory. That's what I would call this quest. This quest has been an ordeal. Hold on to some of the food in case we get hunger. Oh, Ectoplasm, that's actually... That's entirely manageable. I mean, the Houndmaster still can't hit the broadside of a barn. Sedated. But... Whoa. And their first attack is a critical. Let's hit one of the front ones with Noxious Blast. I really shouldn't have done that. That 100% light resistance really should have told me something. Alright. And more slime. Alright. He'll light up one of our few remaining torches. And still miss. Oh, where is your passion? Where is your focus? That's a question I find myself asking these heroes quite often. So Bertrand is the only one who has managed to. So Bertrand is the only one who's managed to hit one of these things this fight. Okay, at least they're missing occasionally too. Well, the more things I target, the more likely I am to hit something. All right, and I even managed to make one of them bleed. I think slime could bleed. Okay, I'm just going to be grateful that even with a critical, that didn't put him on death's door. Alright, stick with battlefield medicine. Bertrand is going to have to focus on being the off healer in this fight. They get criticals very often. He's about to have a heart attack. That's bad. Alright, Crush. Okay, Crush finally manages to hit something. 
Cytokinesis! <laughs> oh, shit. That... Ah, uh, shit. That is actually... It... So they can copy... They can... They can copy themselves. And the copies are just as durable as the original. Meaning we need to kill them all at once. Meaning Hound's Harry really is the way to go. And the Vestal is paranoid. Congratulations, we have... The shadows whisper of conspiracy. Alright, use Defender on the Houndmaster. This way we can focus primarily on healing just the Man at Arms. And the Man at Arms has increased protection. Unfortunately, I have just rerouted attacks to be targeted. And Emery has just had a heart attack. Alright, he's off of Death's Door. Now they're targeting the Vestal. And mortality clarified in a single strike. And Sword of All also had a heart attack. Uh, and apparently they can just copy them. I, I, I am honestly not sure. They, can, they can copy themselves. Ah, great. Well, I may as well heal the other guy who isn't at Death's Door. But, I hope... I hope Sword of All's Death Blow resistance holds up. Well, it is so far. So many useful organs all wasted on me. Uh... That Cytokinesis ability is going to be the difference between winning and losing for us. I mean, Slime does a lot of... That's his third death blow check, I think. And he still won't let us heal him. This is bad. The problem is, if we retreat, I believe that the stress of retreating will kill uh, at least the man at arms and possibly also the Houndmaster. Decisive... Thank you, that's exactly what I needed you to do. Okay, finally, sort of all lets us heal him. Please don't use Cytokinesis. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is so much better than you using Cytokinesis right now. Divine Grace. Alright. This is gonna be a close one. And Rampart. Let's see if we can kill it with that. Or we would have if it had hit. Actually, a Trinoxious Blast might do it. Well, it made the difference. <sighs> and Hound's Harry. Okay! Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. That... That was legitimately terrifying. That was, uh... That was the closest to the edge that we've been in a while. Champion missions are really unbelievably hard. And of course she opens up a stressful incantation on the guy who's about to have a heart attack. Oh. How quickly the tide turns. Okay, Sword of All is just dead on several levels simultaneously. Life wasted in the pursuit of glory and gold. Okay, we're running away from this one. This is where I draw the line. Lost, but the battle may yet be won. We're... we're out of here. It was worth pushing it. It was worth pushing my luck a little bit, but we've made a lot of gold. 
We lost a guy. We're out of here. Uh. Failure tests the metal of heart, brain, and body. I mean, we did make 16,000 gold and a pretty respectable haul of heirlooms in that failure, so... There's, there's an upside, but... Wow, I was expecting champion missions to be brutal. I was not prepared for them to be that brutal. And yep, no resolve experience. And sort of all died. <sighs> well... Curiosity, interest, and obsession. Mile markers on my road to damnation. Well... So ends our first champion level mission. In hindsight, I can't believe I expected it to end any other way. Bertrand, I think you just need a drink or two. Bertrand just needs a drink or several. And... The stagecoach is offering us a veteran jester. On the other hand, it's also offering us an Arabless, and we only have one of those. We only have one jester too, so let's get a let's get the veteran jester. He will be laughing still at the end. And let's see. Let's look at upgrading some of our more experienced people in the hopes of preventing that from happening in the future. Let's see. Tardif, whose competition has died. I think I do need to upgrade Crush a bit more. The accurate, the higher accuracy base is helpful. All right, I'm gonna put a few points into the I mean, a few, put a few gold rather into the experienced people. Let's put some into the less experienced people. I don't know. Conaville is good. Let's check out Fontamai. Honestly, she's pretty well upgraded. I don't know, Sniper's Mark with its ability to reduce the enemy's dodge is actually pretty good. Let's look into upgrading some equipment. Hmm. Don't upgrade... Yeah, I think the last thing I'm going to spend gold on is to upgrade Tardif's armor up to the Bulwark, which confirms what I suspected, that the person who died was equipping maximally upgraded armor. Yeah, I think I need to upgrade my champion-level heroes a bit more before I send them out again. Or maybe send them on a short mission the first time instead of a long one. We do have some heirlooms we can afford to spend. What can we afford to spend them on? Let's see, these two are maxed out. Don't have enough for the survivalists. Could upgrade the brothel. Nothing I can do in the abbey. Uh, nothing for the nomad wagon. And these two can't be upgraded, so... I think, yeah, I probably I could probably trade things around if I had one upgrade I really wanted, but I think I'll hold out on upgrading any structures for a little while. In the meantime, this isn't going to be the end for this part, but I am going to get us up a fresh recording file in the hopes of warding off audio issues. So, I will be back in a moment. There is a great horror beneath the manor. A crawling chaos that must be destroyed. All right, I am back, and uh, let's embark on another quest. Hopefully with a little more success than we had last time. Let's see, what are my options? I think I want to give some experience to this team. Vastel, Canoville, 
Fontemai and who else? And Patri can go here. So, let's see. I could ward off the Eldritch Tide. Now, I'm guessing that Gentle Tide and um, Silence in the Crypts are equivalent to... I don't remember to fresh air in the tunnels, and what they do is make our heroes more effective in the cove, and also uh, um, give more resolve experience in the cove. So that might be worth doing, but we really need to explore the Warrens and Wield. Let's see. I could complete this mission. It's a long mission, a long exploration mission and get the Rampart Shield. That could be very useful for a man at arms. It increases move and stun skill chance, so essentially it increases the effect of Rampart at the cost of reducing damage. That could be an extremely useful weapon. I think I'm gonna try that. We're in the Warrens, so we need a lot of anti-venom. Couple of medicinal herbs. Some bandages. Few keys, little holy water, a few shovels, but not a lot. Plenty of torches, and plenty of food. Both because of hunger and because we're probably going to rest twice. Yeah, this episode is probably going to come out to be a bit longer than usual. All right. I'd say we're provisioned. I haven't forgotten torches this time. Let us embark. And the swine are resistant to disease. Fortunately, this party really likes to inflict bleeding. In fact, yeah, no one in this team can inflict uh, blight. To prosecute our war against the swine, we must first scout their squalid homes. This layout is going to be somewhat challenging to fully explore. Um, I think I know the route I want to take. To try and keep backtracking to a minimum. And we got our first fight. What's your bleed resistance? Only 40%? Harvest, then. And drums of debilitation. Missed. Unfortunately, hook where it hurts did not. I'm actually going to use... Uh, You know, this is kind of a strange idea, but no, the yeah, no, the drummer will die due to bleeding damage. I can't do that. I was thinking of using Damon's pull to pull one of these forward to force the chopper into range of uh, slice off, but instead, I think I'll just go with sacrificial stab. And wicked hack is always nice. Very nice, in fact. And I'm actually just going to have the Arablest heal the Occultist. And he gave us all a splitting headache. Well, you know what? Dirk stab. That's the end of him. And that's the end of him. And sniper shot. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. And there we go. And we found more food, which is good. I have a feeling we're gonna need it. And into our first room battle. Okay, this is not actually bad at all. Alright, harvest. Hoo hoo! Critical harvest. 
And wicked hack. Annihilated. Unfortunately, I was hoping that the occultist would go before the Aura Blast, but this turn. I'm actually gonna use suppressing fire. Because now, both of the mag uh, carrion eaters will die when uh, they take their bleeding damage. And yes, I am Slow setting. Death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. And yes, I am setting the uh, drummer up for uh, sniper shot. For that, I've got sacrificial stab, and he's in exactly the right position for slice off. As the fiend falls, <laughs> the hope blossoms. And sniper shot wasn't even necessary. Unfortunately, no more successful scouting, so we're finally venturing into the unknown. Mechanical the, hazards, possessed by evil intent. And the unknown, it appears, has teeth. I am really glad we have rallying flare, though, in case we run out of torches. Okay, a couple of curios. And even more scouting! That gave us a lot. All right, let's see what we get with this. Loot is what we get. Okay. Back over to here. I need to light up another torch. Packs laden with loot are often low on supplies. Yeah, I don't think that's a problem we have, at least not yet. Almost exactly the same team composition. Well, start off with Harvest. And Vulnerability. You know, I'm just gonna use Sacrificial Stab on the Carrion Eater. Decimated. Whoa! That did a little more than I expected it to do. In fact, that's actually bad. I was hoping to use suppressing fire and hit the two in the back, the drummer and the wretch. Unfortunately, that really sounds like the name of a band, the drummer and the wretch. But unfortunately, because one of the carrion eaters was obliterated, the drummer is too far forward to be hit by uh, suppressing fire. It's gonna make this a little bit more challenging. In fact, I'm just going to use Battlefield Bandage. Focus on healing the Occultist. Because the thing is, by being too far forward for suppressing fire, these two are both in exactly the right position for Harvest. That still is the end of the drummer. Unfortunately, we missed the wretch. Oh, he'll be out next turn. is the weapon that cuts on its own. And finish off that carrying eater Press for us. Give them no quarter. And may as well just keep healing until this thing dies on its the own. Blood quickens. And there we go. A trifling victory. But a victory nonetheless. Let's see, plus 20% disease resistance is nice, but honestly, I'm gonna leave both of those behind. All right, and now across to here. And over to here. A 100 gold waiting to be spent. <laughs> A fortune, 50 gold. I came from nothing, but I'll not end up with nothing. A handsome reward for a task well performed. And we encounter another copy of the note about Huel. Unfortunately, yeah, we really don't have room for. You know what? I'll light one In torch radiance, and take this page. May we find victory. I, I I feel like the note is calling to me. I see it so many times. I want to actually just take it home. All right. 
And over to here. And what do we have here? Now let's use some additional, additional herbs. And, appropriately, the Hellion is drunk now. Which means she does extra damage. I find it hard to complain. Alright. And, opening up with Harvest, as always. Unfortunately, somebody's gonna get munched. Alright. I'm gonna actually use Sacrificial Stab on the Carrion here. Because now it will definitely die to Wicked Hack. And Drums of Debilitation missed. That's good. Also, I can't help but notice that the drum has a face. That's unsettling. <laughs> 31 damage. And Suppressing Fire. Now he's going to be missing a bit more often. Thank you, Suppressing Fire. And that's another Carrion Eater out of the way. This one will die next turn. Let's see if we can make the same thing happen to this one. We can. Oh, Anti-Venom. And let's see what we get from Weird Reconstruction. <laughs> at, at least it didn't inflict bleeding. And I love how he has to remind me that compassion is rare. Yeah, because we didn't get any this turn. Gently. This is how a life is taken. And that is the end of that. Success so clearly in view. Or is it merely a trick of the light? Let's see. I drop the citrine for the portrait, I'll leave the busts. Alright. We really don't have a curio for er, supply item for this one. And I'm gonna move across this hallway. I'll come back for this in a moment. Alright. And if I've done my job correctly, this is the only bit of backtracking that we will have to do. Well, sort of. Alright. And... We move up to here. Ooh! Spiders! Well... Harvest should kill two of them. Precision and power. Yep! That's the end of those two. And improvement. Okay, there's only one left we have to deal with. Okay, there's only none left that we have to deal with. And there we go. That was quick. Why can't they all be that straightforward? We are running a little low on torches, though. And now we go across this way. Oh! Ambushed At least he's not bleeding. Engine. Pretty soon we're gonna have to make camp just because we're running low on torches. We're gonna just have to use um, the camp to replenish the light level. All right, and it's it's the same group from the hallway. Well, let's do the same thing to them. <laughs> I love how much damage the Hellion can do. Oop. Sniper shot missed, though. Oh, let's see how this... That... That is a determined spitter. That spitter is not going to go down easy. Well, Dirk stab. And Another there we go. Cleansed from our lands. I want to drop anything. I'm holding on to the journal page out of basically spite at this point. Um, I'm definitely holding on to the keys and the anti venom and the bandages.
Okay, I'm going to... There appear to be no... These three hallways are the only hallways we haven't scouted. These are the only places where there could be any obstacles. So I feel comfortable giving up the shovels. And while we've gotten some use out of medicinal herbs, they're not terribly important. So I'm going to drop those. And we don't have room for the gold, and I can accept that. Um... I'm going to remember that this is here and actually circle back to it later. After we've had an opportunity to, uh... Use up some of our firewood. Alright. That's mostly going to be food. There's not a whole lot of use to getting that. Okay! Pigs and a madman. And I forgot to reposition. Oh, we're back in position now. It's everyone's favorite ability, Vomit. Let's see, suppressing fire isn't going to do us a whole lot of good. Let's see if we can take this guy out with sniper shot. Another one. Ha <laughs> ha! Not much point in worrying about if it bleeds because we have harvest. So let's just have the, he the Hellion focus on taking this guy out. And that's the end of him. Harvest finally managed to... That is the first time Harvest has missed. That is one nimble crazy guy. Oh. Ooh, yeah, he is a very nimble crazy guy. I suppose with a dodge of 20 it's appropriate. Though, Sniper Shot, despite only being upgraded to level 3, already has an accuracy base of 105. There we go. And if it bleeds to finish the job. And harvest. Okay. That's the end of that group. These nightmarish creatures can be felled. They can be beaten. And I'd say it's time for some rest. In part just to clear up some inventory space. Circle in the dark. The battle may yet be won. Oh, right. One of our heroes has increased food consumption, so Feast uses up ten food instead of eight. I think somebody else may have reduced food consumption. Th this is kind of weird. Well, either way, we have plenty of food. Let's see. Unspeakable Commune prevents nighttime ambush. Um, yeah, this is the only prevents nighttime ambush ability we have. So the extra stress is a bit of an issue. Okay, he can't use turn back time on himself. And every rose has its thorn doesn't uh, affect him. However... Let's see. Let's give him a pep talk to at least reduce incoming stress. And yeah, he can't use encourage on himself either. In that case, I may as well just use marching plan to increase everybody's speed. Alright. And let's rest. Alright, and I am. Lit. The path is clear. I'm going to make one change, only the strength to follow it. which is, while I lose Damon's pull, I haven't really been using it very much, but otherwise Patri can attack perfectly fine from position two, and this way I can use Inspiring Tune a little bit to try and reduce the Jester's stress level. That's, And then when reaching for the map, I accidentally reset everything. Alright. And on to our next battle. Ooh, bandits! Well, fortunately, we have a solution. I can... I misread that. He can use all of his abilities in this position. Well... Ooh. I was hoping that would hit. I suppose you're usually hoping an attack will hit when you use it. 
Well, I was hoping to be able to use Wicked Hack on them, but I suppose I will have to satisfy myself with Suppressing Fire. Of course, they get to use Blanket Fire first. I can hit one of them with Iron Swan, though. And kill him! In that case, I'm not even going to worry about, um... I'm not even gonna worry about debuffing them, I can just kill the other one next time. No, I can't. Well, I can now. So, I forgot that Iron Swan can't hit position 3, but well, he's in position 2 now. And pretty soon, he will be in position dead. Alright. That... I mean... Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. I mean, yeah, we took some damage, particularly the occultists took some damage, but that went staggeringly well. And we scout the last two rooms. All right. Light ourselves another torch. And I was slightly wrong. Just to be certain, I am going to go back to this room, so we're only skipping one room, which means I also have to backtrack through this hallway again. But I've actually managed to keep backtracking, for the most part, to a minimum. Salvage the Under Wealth Torch. Measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. How did they stash a portrait inside of the torch thing? That's, uh... That's impressive. Okay, this fight's gonna be a bit of a thing, I think. Alright. Here's Inspiring Tune again. And... I'd say the Acolyte is the cultist most likely to be dangerous. I gotta love those one damage criticals. And... Let's use Wicked Hack on the Swine Chopper. And let's remove the Acolyte from the equation. Lethargy. She caught lethargy. Just when you think the contagious diseases can't get any weirder, we get that. Ooh, he's bleeding for a lot. Well, now so are they. <laughs> and that's the end of the cultist. Now we just have two pigs to deal with. Use bandage, and let's hope weird reconstruction rolls high. Let's hope he survives to next turn. Alright, battlefield bandage, try and get him a little bit farther away from death's door. Okay, they both. Ooh. They both have four hit points and they're both bleeding for three. That's a little inconvenient. Well, slice off. That's one of them gone. And wicked hack. And there we go. Alright. yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. We're pretty close to the end, and there's a lot of loot, so we want to increase our inventory space. I'm going to use the second firewood now. Light it up. A moment of rest. Feast. A chance to steel oneself against the coming horrors. Okay, so the jester is a stress eater. That's what it is. When his stress level is high, he consumes extra food. Not really much of a problem. We can afford to feast. Um. I'm actually just going to use Triage to heal everyone. Oh. That doesn't heal the, um, person herself. And... I'm going to use Unspeakable Commune. And then I'm going to use, uh, Every Rose Has Its Thorn. The Jester himself has a little bit of stress. 
And we may as well use marching plan again. That extra speed buff did us a lot of good. And let's rest. As the right. light gains purchase, spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. And we have an unlocked strong box with eight crests in it. And the last little bit of backtracking, and we're almost at the end of our journey. Surprisingly effective when I decide to be systematic about things. Ah, more carrion eaters. Why am I not surprised there are a lot of them here? Well, they're in just the right formation. Alright. And do sniper shot on the one that isn't bleeding. Ground quakes. And it gets to attack us once. I fear that the jester has been gravely nibbled. Let's just reduce his stress a little bit. A brilliant confluence of skill and purpose. And there we go. Foolish horrors. Brought low and driven into the mud. And the jester's stress is low enough that he can comfortably be in position two again. I'm really, really liking inspiring too. That that is an incredibly helpful. Alright. And disarming the trap, his stress is down to eight. Well, we finished the quest with, um. two rooms to spare, so I could have skipped this one. However, there is loot. Alright. First thing we're doing is using a skeleton key. Glittering gold, trinkets and baubles, paid for in blood. All right, I think we're actually done fighting, so I can drop all of the healing items for the three trapezohedrons. And now we head to this room. I was wrong. We are not done fighting. It even said that on the map all that, and I just didn't notice. Fortunately, it's spiders. I think we can handle them. Masterfully executed. Okay, that's the two middle spiders down. Like I said, that's the two middle spiders down. Alright! <laughs> Another fool for the fire. And it gets to use web, not that it does much. And the Arablest is stunned, but she only would have been able to use Rallying Flare anyway. And Dirk Stab finishes the job. You know, I feel like the Jester has earned himself a raise. Seize this momentum. Push on to the task's end. Alright. Get back to the default party order. Gonna drop the food and one stack of gold. Since with trapezohedrons around, one stack of gold isn't really very much. And now we loop back over to this chest, and then we will have actually looted basically everything. Yep, we're gonna be thorough on this one. Well, one last hallway, and it's unscouted, so I suppose there could be a hallway back. You would. You would do that. We threw out the food, now we have hunger. Should have thrown out the torches. Well. And for this, we can afford to drop the keys and the torches. And actually take everything. Okay! This has been quite a haul. I suppose. It, it really feels like. Labyrinth may yet prove to be navigable. Really feels like the universe is trying to balance out for that champion mission. Well, 7,500 gold for the reward, plus 13,000 gold that we just found. 
And it's still counting up all the heirlooms. Mostly crests, but partially as crests are the easiest ones to carry a lot of. Alright. And members of the C well, it's just Vastal, but yeah, so a member of the C team has finally graduated to being able to take on veteran missions. Unfortunately, she's fascinated with corpses. Oh, and it is wasting <laughs> a disease that makes you susceptible to disease. And Fontamai is a warrior of light. It does honestly seem appropriate for the sniper to have increased damage if the torch level is high. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. It's like I'm upgrading a stagecoach. Yeah, I can increase the size of the hero barracks again. I'm going to do that. Let's see, reducing the cost of training camping skills isn't worth 35 crests. I do want to do that, though. The Abbey uses busts. Is it the tavern that uses portraits? Yes, it is. Oh, let's upgrade the bar. With enough ale, maybe they can be inured against the horrors below. And we may as well upgrade the brothel too. I don't use it too much, but it's and somewhat useful. Those who cross the threshold with coin in hand. And another final perk of that: we got two diseases, but after that mission to the Warrens, no one needs stress treatment. Get rid of the jester's wasting sickness, and. You have apparently caught a terminal case of laziness, Fontamai. We're gonna need to treat you for that. I feel healthier already. Anyway, having completed one mission that went really sh very badly and one mission that went shockingly well, this is gonna be the end for this part. Thank you all for watching. I love you all, and I will see you next time.